Good evening, my learners. Welcome to today's geography lesson for the Form 2. The main topic is still volcanicity. However, today's lesson focuses on the features resulting from volcanicity. In the previous lesson, we discussed about two types of volcanicity. We discussed about intrusive volcanicity and extrusive volcanicity. So today as we look into features that result from volcanicity, I want us to remember those two concepts, intrusive volcanicity and extrusive volcanicity. Onto the features, there are two types of features. There are two main types of features that are formed from volcanicity. We have intrusive features and we have extrusive features. So for today, we are only going to focus on the intrusive features. So what are intrusive volcanicity features? These are features that are formed when magma pools and solidifies within the Earth's crust. That's the most important bit, within the Earth's crust. The same way we explained that intrusive volcanicity is the, is the, is the active volcanic activity that uh, involves magma intruding through the crust of the Earth but not reaching the surface of the Earth. So we have intrusive features. These are features that are formed when magma pools and solidified within the Earth's crust. Now these features form inside the Earth's crust and can only be exposed after processes of denudation such as erosion and weathering. Otherwise, they still remain within the crust of the Earth. Now I have listed some intrusive features that we are going to discuss about today. So the intrusive features are listed on the whiteboard. We have seal, Dyke, Lacolith, Bartholith, Lopolith, and Facolith. I'm going to explain or simply describe how each of these intrusive feature is formed. So we are going to start with a cell. By definition, a cell is an igneous intrusive feature that is found between bedding planes of rock strata. Now when I say bedding planes, this is what I mean. I mean the horizontal layers of the crustal rocks. Now in the diagram that I have shown on the whiteboard, the horizontal rock strata or the layers of the crustal rocks have been indicated by the color blue. So a seal has been labeled as number one. So the seal is formed when magma intrudes through the crustal rocks before spreading horizontally along the bedding planes of rock strata to cool and solidify, forming the feature that we know as a seal. The second feature that we are going to discuss about is the feature dike. Now, a dike is a wall of igneous intrusion that cuts across the crustal rocks. It cuts across the layers of the crustal rocks. Now, dikes may be of two types. We may have dikes that are slanting or dikes that are simply vertical. So how do we describe the formation of a dike? A dike is formed when magma that is viscous intrudes through the crustal rocks to solidify to form a wall of vertical, uh, a wall that is vertical in nature. So it is a wall of magma intrusion that solidifies across the crustal rocks. That is a dike. Now the third feature is what we call a lacolith. By definition, a lacolith is simply a dome-shaped igneous intrusion with a flat base. How is it formed? It is formed when viscous magma intrudes the crustal rocks where it spreads and solidifies after cooling. Where it spreads and solidifies after cooling. Now the dome shape is as a result of the magma pushing the crustal rocks above it. 
So the dome shape is simply a result of the magma trying to push the crustal rocks. So the crustal rocks uh, assume the shape that is taken by the magma intrusion. The fourth feature is what we call the batholith. Now the batholith is the largest igneous intrusion feature and it is formed when a large mass of volcanic material intrudes the crustal rocks and the other thing about the batholith is that due to the nature of the hot volcanic material the rocks that are in contact with the feature are always metamorphosed are always metamorphosed as a result of the great heat so the rocks that surround this feature are always different in nature due to metamorphism so it is a large mass of volcanic material that is formed when magma intrudes the crustal rocks the other feature is what we call a lopolith now a lopolith is a saucer shaped igneous intrusion that is formed when magma intrudes the crust, spreads, cools, and solidifies into a saucer-shaped feature. Now, I have put a star here just to try and explain why is it saucer-shaped? Why is it taking a shape of a depression? Now, this shape is believed to be as a result of the weight of the overlying crustal rocks. So it is believed to be as a result of the weight of the overlying crustal rocks. So ideally, a lobolith is formed the way a cell is formed, but the only difference is that it is weighed down by the crustal rocks and in the end it forms the saucer shape. To the last feature is what we call a facolith. Now, facolith are usually formed in series. They don't occur as one. We have them occurring in a series. Now, lacoliths are igneous intrusive features that are formed where crustal rocks have undergone folding. And in many cases, they are formed at the syncline of a fold or at the anticline of a fold. So those are facolids. They are lens shaped layers of igneous intrusion that are formed where crustal rocks have undergone folding. So the explanation about facolid marks the end of our lesson today. Attached with this video are lesson notes that are comprehensive and assignment questions that you are requested or required to answer before we proceed with the topic. I would like to wish you a nice time and continue staying safe.